will never quit. I've made a decision in my heart and life that I'm going to serve the Lord all of my days. And my prayer is that you make that decision in your life as well. Jesus made a statement once in Luke 9 and verse 62. He said, anyone who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Notice that phrase, looks back. Once we make a decision to serve Jesus, we should never look back. There's an interesting story that Jesus told in Luke 17. He's speaking prophetically about the end days, but he says this in verses 31 and 32. In that day, the one who was in the field, let him not turn back. And then he gives a powerful three-word sermon, remember Lot's wife. You may remember Lot and his wife as believers who were very worldly, and they were living in Sodom. But as a favor to Abraham, God allowed Lot and his family to leave before judgment came to Sodom and Gomorrah. But there was a command by one of the angels to Lot's family as they were leaving. The command was this, do not look behind you. But Genesis 19, 26 says, But his wife looked back behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Now you might say, that's a harsh judgment. Simply for looking the wrong way, she became a pillar of salt. But the word looked is interesting in the Hebrew. It means to regard with pleasure. This was not just a casual glance. It was a longing for what she would be leaving behind. You see, she had been taken out of Sodom, but Sodom had not been taken out of her. Now, we sometimes say, if looks could kill, well, hers did. So we can see that she drew back, she turned back, and because of that, did not finish her course properly. Now, it's easy to follow the ways of the world, but it takes real effort to follow God's ways. We've all heard the story about various fishermen in Alaska who see, see salmon going upstream to mate when everything else is going downstream. Many of the salmon don't even make it back to their original place of birth. But there's something on the inside of them that goes against the grain. And if you're going to serve Jesus, you're going to have to go against the grain and say, Lord, I'm going to live for you. I'm going to do the will of God, even if no one else does. Now, I've found this. Life in general is not always easy. And life as a believer has its own set of challenges. Now, that's not a bad confession. That is simply reality. But I've also found this. We were never promised an easy life. But we are promised an overcoming life. And no matter what disappointments have come your way, no matter what hurts, no matter what has attacked your life physically, financially, spiritually, God always has a way out. He will bring you into victory. Now many Christians don't have a hard time forgiving others, but they struggle to forgive themselves. Maybe they've been through a terrible relationship. Maybe they've done some things in the past they're embarrassed about. Maybe they've been tripped up in some areas and they just don't believe God could ever use them again. Please remember this. Defeat is not an event. It is a decision. But on the other hand, refusing to quit is also a decision. Come what may, make the decision. I will not quit. But Pastor Mark, I've fallen. I, I just don't believe God could ever use me. One of my favorite promises is Micah 7, 8. It says this, when I fall, I will arise. I like that. Refuse to give up on yourself or those around you. You may remember a time when Jonah in the Old Testament ran away from the call of God upon his life. He did not want to preach in Nineveh, so he got on a boat and ran. But you know the story, he was thrown overboard out of his disobedience, and he was swallowed by a great fish. Eventually he repented, and that fish released him, and he came back again on dry ground. And Jonah 3.1 says this, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, I love that verse because that shows me something. He is the God of a second chance. 
And I believe he's the God of a third chance and a fourth chance because the scripture says the righteous fall seven times, but they get back up again. God forgives you. You need to forgive yourself and say, I will arise, I will dust myself off, and I will serve Jesus all of my days. One of my heroes in the faith was a great preacher by the name of Dr. Lester Sumrall. He had a worldwide ministry. He also had a television ministry, and he was located in South Bend, Indiana. And several years ago, while he was still alive, one of his sons came and picked up a guest speaker at the church, and this guest speaker was asked, did you hear about our TV station? It burned down. This guest speaker said, yes, I did. As a matter of fact, I heard about it. What did Dr. Sumrall say when it happened? This, his son said, Dr. Sumrall's son said, he wasn't here when the fire occurred, but as soon as he got home, we picked him up at the airport, and I said, Dad, the TV station burned down. Do you want to see uh, what it's like? Do you want to go see it? He shook his head and said, why do I want to see the ashes? Build it back. And so they did just that. He refused to get into self-pity. He refused to quit. He was probably in his 70s at that time, but he said, I will not quit. I will not give up. We will rebuild it again, and that's exactly what they did. You need to remember this. Make a decision. I will never stop serving Jesus because defeat is not an event it is a decision, but refusing to quit is a decision too. Resolve in your heart, I will serve the Lord all of my days.